very much, Sharks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Elimination Day. My name is Asterix. I'm joined by Aragon and Dag to take you through the whole remainder of the day as well. There's a bit of bias on the desk. I'm not happy Smidge, about that. You know, you know Perks, it's there. He's yeah. the older team heretics on the other side. You know, Odo, no surprise, man. Still on Giant X hype train. Like... Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be very much closer than anyone really thinks. I mean, Chox has gone with the 2-1. That's kind of where my head's at as well. Yeah. I think both these teams have shown that they can take games and kind of uh, take control from there and start to move forward. But I do think there's also a little bit of uh, uncertainty when it comes to mid-games with both these teams. Yeah, I think this is tricky because, I mean, you look at the series and GX, yes, they took a game off of Fnatic, but... I think Team Heretics' early games were actually pretty decent against SK. At yeah. one point, they yeah. were in a really nice game state where they had True. three dragons, and they just lost a team fight, and they got a team fight, and that happens. And it's upsetting, isn't it? Don't you yeah. think it's upsetting because like, we see some of these great moments, but then we're like, who's the star to carry them through? And the biggest story for me towards the end of this year has been the star power on Team Heretics. While in name value, it's really good. In play style and individuality, we want to see who stands up to the table. We talk about Yankos a lot, we talk about Wonder, but like, who gets them over the line? But I think that's the story of Heretics. It feels like so many of these players are trying to find new beginnings away from what was yeah. their legacy organizations. When you look at Wonder and Yankos, they only finished twice outside of the top four before they joined G2. They finished once outside of the top four when they joined G2. And now with Heretics, it almost feels like you're kind of expecting this team to fall outside of the top four. Even looking at Trimby um, with Wonder, they found some success with Fnatic before they came here, but they haven't been able to recreate that now on Team Heretics. Definitely. And I think I kind of agree with the desk. I really think in this series, it is on Wonder. He has a bunch of different avenues he can go down. You know what the Antonio is going to pick up. And you have a bunch of champions that work well into his pool. I wouldn't even be surprised to see something like a blind pick Camille or a blind pick, you know, maybe a Mordekaiser even. Because what is realistically Antonio going to answer with? It's just going to be a tank for sure. We know, again, three picks already of the Orn now. This week, a little bit of an insight. I decided to say, hey, I think Antonio is one of the best parts of this team, if not the best part. You all said, Hysterics, I'm not sure if I trust you anymore. So I've got a lot of people calling me out, but I have to say, I've been relatively impressed with his development over this split. Aragon, stop smiling. <laughs> I mean, look, okay, you get impressed when he does a nice knock up in a team fight. Yeah, I, I, look at, I look at 15 minute stats and I see 1K down on average. And I think, <laughs> yes, he is, you know, doing well in these team fights, but that's a bit egregious, even when you're playing weak side. I mean, dude, Gim Goon was like that. That's all I'm going to say. Then he ended up winning a world championship. So we get into draft here to start off. Yone kicks us off. Yeah, I mean, getting rid of that. But I do think it's interesting to see the how this draft is going to look because we kind of see tank jungle is probably going to rise up priority here yankos have been going towards the sejuani which we see banned away but also like giant x traditionally on red side always banned the vi but coming into this we actually haven't seen heretics put a huge amount of priority on towards the vi pick so i'm curious if that manages to slip its way through the draft on red side and whether heretics decide to prioritize it but even then looking at things like for jackies on these ad mids has only played the the corky once has never played tristana has favored more things like the Kaisen Ezreal, so it feels like the draft is being warped away a little bit from what we expect of our strong mess of picks. Yep. Target man's already coming in with the Rumble as well. Jackie's Yone uh, going to be target banded as well. That Zeri was what I was looking at as a B1 for Team Heretics, because I think Flakid really, really likes his, his best champion by far. Also, also a, flex, right? a potential flex to mid, but I think it would go to Fla uh, Flakid because of his comfort. Another pick I'm looking at potentially is that Vi. I think Giant Tech's draft in two ways. The other dra uh, draft, Vi with a pairing champion, yep. um, dive onto backline with a Zeer as well, potentially for uh, Jackie's, or they draft AP tank with 80 mids. It's always this kind of box down to make them kind of one-dimensional in a way. I mean, for Giant X, we know the solution. We know it works for the early game for them as well, and that's a good little hit there. As we look for this last ban out of the double 80 carries already taken away, we know what is blindable on B1 right now. Leona is one, Tristana another. Corky also there. Dak, where do you want to start? Yeah, I think it'll be the Corky. You get the flex if you really wanted to give it to Flakid, but more than likely going to go towards Vyra in the mid lane. It does mean you're probably setting up something like a Vi Tristana here for Jackie's in that mid lane and trying to work through that pairing yep. that Aragon was just talking about. But I, I think the ability to get a strong jungler that can kind of play engage for Juhan is critical for Giants. Yeah, I mean, if we're looking at previous drafts, it could be like Vya Zir, it could be Maokai plus AD carry like Lucian. Um, I think you have a bunch of different options that you can go down here. I like the Maokai lock-in. I think it's one of Juhan's best champions. Sure. Um, you don't necessarily need to lock in your Lucian here, but that's also a good matchup into the into the Corky. I wouldn't be surprised Ooh. to see them pick it up. <laughs> I mean, this is a funny flex. I will say, over in the LPL, this is a really good reference for me right now. Maokai has been a flex through jungle, Kaisa. through supporters. Kites gets locked in I anyway. think it's more of a call out to Yanko saying, hey, look, we're probably going to go for the two trees, but, but that it let's is. see if we can... Uh, 
might make that happen, but I do think that's probably what Jankos is going to fall back towards. He hasn't really played the Vi this split. He yep. uh, has one game on it, but could end up working out, but it's not great into the Maokai. Instead, he is going to go for the Brand. Ooh. So this is not what I was expecting, because we have seen him play the Karthus, but mm -hmm. hasn't had the best of success on it. I think they've kind of relied on Jankos to be this strong tank player that can set up for engages, dictate the pace of the early game, not be a carry in his own right. Yeah, I think this has been a bit of a learning week. I imagine Alistair could get locked in into the owner. That's fantastic as well in terms of a matchup. But right. this has been a bit of a learning week, the past week rather, where I feel like everyone's prioritizing the wrong champions. There's a lot of discussion with Brand, um, and there's the Lucian into the Corky as well. But Brand being super easy to pilot. Jankos on carries, though, is not something we normally see. I was really expecting something like the Ivan to come out, you know, Jankos to play as standard champions, but it's going to be more meta. I love the hit there. I mean, Dagger already mentioned the Carthus pick, right? That was what was prioritized in the regular season, yep. one of his most played. On the other side, we look at the brand and his a new experience, but we know it is a very common experience across the world, as right now it feels like the strongest jungler in the meta. We get Ash Band away, speaking of strong 80 carries, and that pool is getting mega pinched. Yeah, I'm curious to see what heretics make of this Lucian, though, because uh, in theory, you ban away the Nami, right? To say, hey, yeah. we don't want the Lucian Nami. Mm. But more than likely, what's going to happen is they then flex the Lucian into the mid lane and play the Kaiser down that bot side. So I think you have options here, which kind of puts heretics in this weird position where it's like, do you ban Nami to for solution mid, and then try and play that more aggressive yeah. bot side of the map to punish the short range guys. I, I really don't want to see it. I don't think Naomi's an Ignar champ at all. He always mispositions, and it's just he's so much better on these uh, hard engaged support champions, champions like the Rel, champions like um, the Leona and the Nautilus as well. So I'd like to actually see uh, Nami go to mid lane and the Kaiser down bot. Patrick had a stellar performance last week. I just have a comment on the fact that while we get into the remaining bands, Team Heretics have decided no Orn for the Antonio. He's only played <laughs> yeah. champion so far. You know what? is different about this draft, gents, is that Giant X didn't decide to pick Orn on three here on red side. I mean, that's yep. also, that's an adaptation. I think it's also the fact that because you've already got the... Traditionally, what we see is, okay, we're going to get some AP damage coming through from Juhan, but mm -hmm. they usually want to try and pair with something that's a bit more AP heavy as well. Because you've got that mixed damage from the Kai'Sa, I think you are more free to go for kind of an AD tank top laner, because usually in these situations, you see the Antonio go for something like the Gragas, but at least he will be able to get his counter pick here against what Wonder wants to go for. But I know you were already talking about Wonder can just take some yep. of these more uh, offensive matchups in the top laner. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can take a tank if you want to. More frontline for the brand is always good, and the, the hyper carries, they already have enough damage in my opinion, but they can go the, the isolated scaling route if they want to. Uh, on the other side, you've got Alistair into Leona, better lane matchup than Rakan. They were debating between the two. Rakan would give great team fighting. Um, there's the Aatrox, Ooh, a potential anti-tank. That's the preemptive pick. Now, what does uh, the Antonio have in store for the Aatrox? I, I mean, think that throws me back to G2 under a little bit, doesn't it, for you? Yeah. I mean, at the time when G2 were at their peak, this pick was all the way to the top. So we return to that while we look towards Zaya here. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder, Malphite, may, I'm trying to think of the Antonio champions like if we're well into Aatrox. He might sack lane and go something like the Poppy, but I don't like it um, as much either. I mean, the reality is Aatrox is a really good champion into tanks, right? And dive champions. They have a bunch of melees and diving from the Kai'Sa as well. Okay. So the Antonio, he has to reach down. I mean, Nah could be okay, um, but again, not really the Antonio. I'm not really the biggest fan of the Aphelios in this situation. I prefer Aphelios where you've kind of got this definitive tanky front line and you kind of operate in a ring around him to keep him safe and let him deal the damage that you want to. But when you're in this kind of situation, a singular engage coming through from the Leona isn't wonderful. And I think that that's where Kevin. we're going to see them struggle, yeah. which is trying yeah, to find windows to get Flacket into fights against like an Alistair, now a Kennen, now a Maokai. These fights become really difficult for Flacket to operate. It's a really valid point because, again, Trimby is that only piece, right? And, you know, and the further point, Dagger, if Wonder is playing Flank Duty as well, how does Flacket operate in the fights? Especially when Cannon gets locked in for Giant X, and we're just talking about the Antonio. Like, this guy, you know, plays weak side in the early game, has bad laning stats, and really struggles outside of anything, or rather, doesn't get to play anything yep. outside of a tank. He's not on tank duty this game. He's a big role to play here in what is a very big dive comp to open us up. Yeah, I want to reiterate, 64% win rate on the Kennen, really, really uh, good at this champion potentially, and especially in the LVP. But I want to reiterate the fact that this was the best version of Giant X that we saw. Yeah. We saw them give resources towards the Antonio, not blind picking his champs, but to get him the most comfortable matchup, always often losing and fitting the comp, but the best, most comfortable matchup that adapts to that as well. But now he has a carry uh, champion, in a good matchup, and it's on him to see how much he can flex that lead. It's also something we've seen a hell of a lot over in the LPL, and I was kind of surprised that we didn't see it brought up more in the LEC. And when we kind of look at teams adapting to 14-13, this is definitely something that I'm not surprised to see coming through, because it is an incredibly strong lane pick, but also something that can be massive in team fights. So 
I'm expecting exhausts galore coming yeah. through for the, for, uh, from the Heretic side to try and keep him in check and make sure that this cannon can't pop off the team first. I mean, look, if he does, though, I will say, you got to start saying maybe Hysterics was onto something here because, look, for Giant X, their backs are against the wall, much like Team Heretics in this BO3. We need star performances. I think that can be our little motto of the, of the series, gentlemen. Who's going to be the biggest stars? Can Jackie's control himself? Can he get out of this part of getting caught out in the mid game and really transitioning that lead? Can Team Heretic step up to the plate? I mean, there's a lot I need to ask considering that both these teams, they've been kind of this mid to bottom tier throughout the year, right? You know, both of them really trying to get themselves into season finals. A win here would help them do exactly that. Yeah, definitely wouldn't want to make an improvement. I'm a Team Heretic's last split, I believe, in the playoffs finishing fifth or sixth rather. Mm -hmm. I want to make an improvement here, and this is definitely the game to do it. I think they have so many good strengths in this team composition. You can see, though, championship points on your left-hand side of the screen. That's what these two teams are playing for today. The winner here will almost guarantee themselves season yep. finals. The only team that can catch them is Carmen Corp if they hit that top three, which will then push the winner out of that contention. Loser, though, there is no more. This is it. You do not hit season finals. You do not get to pass go. You do not get to collect that $200. Oh, you no. are, season is done. Your year is done. So everything on the line for these two squads. And I mean, it's crazy enough that we give them $200 just for, you know, getting into season finals, Dagda. But again, <laughs> you know, your culmination of the year all on the line. The craziest bit being that you don't play for another five months. And we have to see what happens in 2025. It's like half a year away, literally as Juhan starts on the bottom side of this map. And yeah. this is an invader, cheeky one at that. As Jankos, not gonna get vision of him just yet. He pops around the corner while doing red. Yeah, very often your options into brand and to invade after one camp or just straight up level one, because his level one, his early game isn't that good and yep. you will be outpaced. So Juhan flexing Maokai's ability to take these raids. Yeah, we'll just spot out that Yankos was in fact pathing down towards his bottom side, gonna move back in towards his own jungle. So Yankos gonna be aware that they were stolen away fairly quickly, but at least they'll be able to track exactly where Yankos is and what he's gonna be up to as they start to move through the rest of the map. Goes back to his own jungle for the time being. I mean, as Yankos will start clearing up, he'll be spotted on the ward transitioning. So good information for the Antonio on this Cannon and Aatrox. Aragorn, do you want to start up there? Because I feel like Aatrox versus Kennen, not a matchup we've seen a lot recently, and also just more of a skill-based matchup, right? Yeah, I was taking a look at it and seeing if there were any interesting rune choices as well. Usually you see something like the Comet coming out from uh, Windron's Aatrox here, because it's good for the poke trades, especially when you get some points in Q. Yep. Uh, it feels pretty good to just EQ forward and do a bunch of damage, but not taking it. He's against a bunch of dive in terms of the compositions right now. Giant X, they really want to dash forward. Kaisel forward, dash forward, uh, flank with the cannon as well. Mm -hmm. Dive into the back line and one shot. And Brand and Aatrox, they really love this. They really love this, same as Aphelios. That's why I really like the Aphelios in this draft. These champions, they love champions coming into them. And they just turn them to mincemeat. Because I know as well, we're also discussing the fact that Dagger, I loved your frontline point, and you're talking about how Flackett can operate in this team as well. And so I guess there's, there's little tidbits to it and how it interacts as well. And as it looks Trimby, just tries to get an early roam at level two here towards mid. The wave is cleared, so not much to be gained. It's Viro hits four and backs off after the clear. Yeah, my biggest worry for Heretics is if you fall behind, I don't know how you try and find moments to get back into this game. You're right. incredibly short range. Like trying to face check into Giant X is going to be absolutely miserable. So I think that's where for Heretics, you kind of need Yankos to get the ball rolling nice and early. And even with Wonder, having this slow push in the top side isn't going to work out great for him. He tried to hit a couple of cues, ended up slow pushing the wave, and it means that the Antonio can kind of start to trade back, although some nice little hits there should help him out. I hear you in terms of your worries about team compositions, but I raise you one brand ultimate. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've been watching any LPL LCK, but this champion is not normal. You press R on brand <laughs> and you... You do disturbing things. Yeah, it's really good. Really I mean, normal. I've definitely <laughs> seen it in the LPL, yeah. but I just, I still think like trying to get into those positions is going to be really tough where you are essentially just getting an island, right? Flashing uh -huh. in from the Antonio, an ult coming in from Juhan. Like, there are very few people that can really set you up on bot side. It's good interrupt though. Igna actually outplayed Trimby's engage and outplays it again. Yankos is out, but now Patrick with no summoners left. It might not be enough. Brand comes into fruition. The Gravitum as well. An easy first blood right where they need it. Double crab into a bot lane gank from Yankos. Really good stuff. Those slows coming in from the Gravitum autos. Even if you flash cleanse away, Patrick cannot get away. He cannot get to his tower. So nice gank coming from Team Heretics. Early lead solidified again. As much as Ignar tried to stop it, there's nothing he can do in the end. And a kill right on that Aphelios when he's been a big topic of our conversation so far. He even gets the push in as well. There's not much Ignar can do about that. As this will give Flackett and Trimby nice reset timing as well. 
Juhan is still here on the bottom side, so not going to be able to help out too much. You're just going to see potential here for him to try and reset, get up back towards the Void Grubs, which is where I think oh, big. this is going to start fighting off. But yeah, I mean, Flatcat being caught here does help out where you can get this wave shove and at least then rotate with Patrick to match if you want to try and contest on that top side. Level 6 should be hit for the Antonio. Same for Jackie's. And I think that's where you could really start to blow open this game if you want to try and take an early skirmish as Giant X. Delayed resets coming in here for Flacket. I think top side for t Team Heretics, you have a lot stronger champions at this stage in the game. Uh, sorry, G Giant X rather, but the Kennen and the Lucian, you generally win out early. So if you want to take that fight in the Grubs, you can see Ignar already passing through mid to maybe contest them. I think it definitely should go the way of Giant X here in terms of ultimates. Really important just before I forget, gentlemen, nice shirt today, by the way. I think we saw it at the start. Thanks. I didn't compliment <laughs> you, but we're really on our game. But it's a little bit of a self brag as well, you know? But man, I hope it's as nice as the series ahead because you guys, whew, Boy, oh boy, it's important to mention as uh, Lookout Stylus helping us out today. Oh, as Spyro. Yeah, we're hitting level six as well. Remember, Jackie's has a culling in this mid lane. He launches it, but Spyro waits very patiently. Valkyrie's out, and Jackie's ult now down. I actually think that's a bit of a mistake, though. If they had Juhan there to try and flash on his Spyro and keep him checked, maybe you can go for that. But not having that ultimate for this fight mm. is going to be a little bit of an issue. You would have liked to try and poke someone down with Juhan having the setup for you, or even Ignar having that flash engage for you. The Antonio will push in topside, makes this very difficult for Herrick to try and contest, especially with Flacket on that bottom side as well. Yeah, take a look at Flacket on the bottom side. I wonder if he has um, the white gun. It's been a long time since it's Aphelios. He might be able to cross map these grubs pretty effectively. You could see that Patrick actually shifted up towards mid to secure these grubs, and TH are trying to play with time here. If they mess with them, if they delay the resets, Depends. take more plays down in I, bot and I mean, mid. Wonder might be able to ult the out. Juhan preemptively flashes away, and Wonder doesn't pull a trigger. He just threatens it. And like that, they get a couple of summoners. But again, that's three grubs over to Giant X. So despite bot getting a couple of plays here, you got to remember that grubs run the map. Like they do if you can get to, you know, four, five, six, but at the moment only having three means that you're not in a completely dangerous situation as Heretics. And oh, getting gold onto the Aphelios to try and accelerate him could help out at that potential next fight, but now Good. Ignar... Whoa, from over the wall, ships in the night no longer. Ignar gets the pulverized up and he's the trample on the way. Wonder goes into the ascended mode, but man, there's no ulti for Ignar, so it ain't a fair trade, and Yankos burns him down to a crisp. The second kill for Team Heretics in this very prominent early game. Yeah. Wonder playing with so much confidence there for good reason. He has Merc Treads. Look at that trio right there. The Kennen, the uh, Maokai, and the Alistair. No one's going to do damage to them as the dive comes through. He has Flash as well, but I'm looking for the Exhaust. It's not up just yet. The Antonio is still burning down. Nevertheless, Wonder, Wonder. It's going to be sacrificed for Trimby's life, but he picks up a kill. The support doesn't matter. And that wave's pushing in without a teleporting cannon. And that's the thing, the fact that you managed to crash this wave, I'm not going to stick around for a plate, but you're going to get a ton of gold injected in for it. Wonder, it's going to be very nice for trying to keep this wave in check. And yeah. at the end of the day, sure, Trimby dies, but it's not too bad, all said and done. Yeah, but take a look at this play, right? Even if they all turn on him, he is going to drain tank all of them because they don't do any damage through his Merc Treads. Nice play comes through. They one-shot Ignar here, and then they just play for the re-dive. You can see that the Maokai, Juhan, doesn't want any part of this, and the Antonio can't catch the wave afterwards. It's a good thing though, gents, again, you know, we're asking a lot about the star power today. It's really been what I've been asking throughout. Wonder set up for a bit of success up in this top lane. His third most played champion of all time, by the way, is this Aatrox. And as I said, it gave me vibes of like G2 Wonder. It gave me those vibes of 2019 and like a top that, yes, can be versatile and can be like weak side top, but also has his carry pants on, you know, when he feels like it too. And today feels like the day as we set up again for a big early game lead that's now the tune of about 1,500 gold for Team Heretics. Yeah, I mean, this is the reason why we're building up Wonder. Over the course of the split, he's actually improved, right? Yep. Over over the past year, we, you can say, you know, he hasn't played the best, he hasn't the best year of his career, but mm -hmm. he has improved the split, showing us more champions back to the carries, like Camille. Yep. And now the preemptive Aatrox into the Kennen has a CS lead. I want to highlight how this isn't normal. Usually it's it's, it's very much a Kennen favorite matchup, as most matchups are as the ranged into the melee. Nice. And yet Wonder is winning. The early games winning for Team Heretics. Yep. While well, we are on the, the topic of, of champion pool as well for one to two, I mean, it is just the funnest thing to talk about right now. This split through summer. Look at the diversity. Like, this guy is playing literally everything. And I think that's kind of what's been so good for Heretics. You've seen him pop off on things like the Mordekaiser. You've seen him pop off on some of the more tanks like the Cassante. But having that flexibility to say, hey, we can take the Camille, we can take the Twist of Fate, it has kind of been Wonder flexing his muscles and showing that he isn't just, well, a one-hit Wonder, right? And you know on that graphic as well, we, it was too much because he's playing so much. Uh, or Mordekaiser are not on that graphic. Like, it's kind of crazy, again, the fact that there is that much to choose from from a single split where they only play nine games in the regular season as well. Is and I gotta say, they put a lot of faith in him. 
very often what you'll see is Trimby and Yankos just heading topside as a duo. Yep. They'll just hit up topside and say, you know what, we can dive top. It happened all of last series as well versus SK. But I think that's what's been missing from Heretics, right? Is they didn't really feel like they had an identity. It didn't feel like Trimby was getting out to get out on the map and work with Yankos in the same way over the course of the regular split. But the last two series, this one included, it feels like you're actually starting to see Trimby move, work with Yankos, starting to put pressure towards that top side. And suddenly Heretics' early game is looking significantly better. So now 15 minutes. Wonder what they're gonna do here. Team Heretics, do you contest Grubs now, deny the six Grubs, or do you cross-map down bot side with Flacker's potential guns? Is a solid question. Six Grubs so potent in the current meta. Looks like they're gonna head down bot side. I really would be wary of these six Grubs, though. And that 15 seconds now up as it spawns, so... Again, looks like Jankos is here first time on the map, as... For now, Juhan is just kind of thinking about his options, still heading towards bot. Might be Team Heretics to start this off, especially with Wanda yeah. pushing Antonio under the turret and picking up a plate of his own. I mean, the fact that Juhan is still on that bottom side means that there's a potential that Yankos just gets to steal these away. Yep. You do groups incredibly quickly, and point. despite the fact that you got the reset timer off for Patrick Ignar with first push, they kind of missed it, and now they kind of just wander back to bot side, have the trade, but you don't get anything in response as Giant X. Like, there's no real position on the map, and honestly, might end up setting up a dive here on that top side. You can see Yankos and Trimby considering it now. Heading over to top side, no flash the Antonio. This is just a potential stun here from Trimby if he wants to flash forward, but the Antonio, he smells it, he sees it coming. On a ward there. And with the grubs themselves, I mean, Wonder will be able to get yet another bit of tower play. Gents, it feels like we're repeating what we saw again you know, even in that first uh, first game, first series versus SK, right? Good early games from Team Heretics. There's a solid foundation there. Our first 10, almost 15 minutes as we approach in a couple of minutes' time now. You know, Team Heretics are holding the line in the early game, and Flack is in a good spot despite here getting pushed in by Patrick. You can see there's a gold bleed pretty much everywhere, apart from that mid lane. Definitely is a really good game state. They scale so damn well. Brand wanting to get through his full clears and wanting the champions to come into him. Getting through this early game. It's going to be really good for the mid-game team fights. And especially if you can try and control space around these early objectives, you're in such a good spot, because then you do get like so many opportunities to set up for Trimby stun into the brand ultimate, where there's a lot of GX trying to clump up in these choke points. You can see Heretics at the moment trying to play around that. We're spotted on a ward as they enter in to try and contest the blue ball free spawn, but I think they need a little bit more push on this mid and bottom side before they can really set up for that. Yeah, identifies uh, that the resets have come through. I was a little bit worried there in case a fight would pop out because they are down significantly in terms of items, just components towards completed items of the mid laner, the jungler and the AD carry. We didn't highlight yet, there is AP Maokai. So wanting a little bit more poke into this short range composition from Team Heretics here. Are you worried about the front line here? Because we've got we've got an Alistar there as well, but you know, we've got now an AP damage source in the jungle that's a little bit squishier than we first thought, right? Yeah, I mean the thing is you can play frontline in a way when you're creating space. You know, if you're if you're Kennen and you're denying the enemy AD carry the ability to hit, uh, because you're threatening a potential flank, you know, that's a way of frontlining. Um, but they also have a heavy dive composition, you know, they don't necessarily need to play front to back. Um, they can just dive into the back line if they want to and play with flanks. And I think that's really where Heretic's composition will struggle if you end up kind of even Steven going mm -hmm. into these fights is the fact that you can have multiple different flank angles. And Trimby kind of has to be the guy leading the charge. So a lot of his CC and abilities are going to be used in creating that engage, setting up for, you know, trying to actually close the distance onto Giant X's front line. But it means there's then very little for, say, if the Antonio finds a position or Juhan comes into the flank or they find Trimby in River. Well, that might <laughs> happen. Bramble smashes out. Good damage, especially before Dragon. 20 seconds until that ocean top right you can see spawns and Team Heretics opened us up but Giant X are looking to contest this nice and early. Yeah, I wonder if Team Heretics can contest this. I'd rather they didn't because pre Triforce Corky isn't that useful. They could potentially make a play towards top side onto the Antonio. If Wonder can find any good trades to affect the Antonio's Ooh, condition. Maybe. I mean, that's good damage. Half HP already. That dude has a sundered sky. Aatrox, apart from being a god, I mean, that's just a brilliant lane to play. And look at Yankos in the minimap. He's like, ooh, that looks tasty. <laughs> he immediately starts to run up <laughs> towards the top side. I mean, even if you don't get the play onto the Antonio, uh, which may still happen. Yeah, he has to ult for the wave at the very least. You could argue that ult is going to be useful, but never mind. He TPs away, and Wonder won't be able to do anything about it, but... At least the wave's gone. But you're still in position for Rift Herald if you wanted to as Heretic. So yep. you've still got a ton of options here. So that's a major win for Heretic. Sure, you lose the dragon, but an ocean dragon isn't the worst. Now, hang on. Sneaky. I mean, Black it flashing to the left was a good play. Nature's Grass will follow him, though. And as he puts the turret down, he's got Graviton, but it won't slow them down. It won't even stop them in place. He tried to outplay it, and a good grasp at the important situation. 
but Juhan still ends up taking him down. Yeah, take a look at the other side of the map. Wunder is one shotting his turrets. The Antonio is having a really rough time in this game, having to ult multiple waves to be able to stay alive, thinking that he's potentially going to get a cross map and Dovon, and having to TP out. It's been absolutely miserable. Wunder putting on Clinic here. Down in the bot side, dive though. Yeah, Flacker with those chakrams trying to make it work, but at the very least, they get the bot link tower with Jackies. But first turret trade does go to the top side first for Wunder, more importantly. I mean, this Aatrox is going to be a dream. 1700 gold lead. And I know I came in saying, you know, oh, I've got some high things to say about the Antonio. But once again, reality strikes when we see that he's lame. No matter what champion he's playing, has been a struggle. Now, Team Heretic's top side, granted, Yankos lives up here in a tent with the Herald now in his back pocket, but still. It's a big gap top. That's what I was going to say. It is kind of hard to just put the blame at the Antonio's feet when he's been dove several times That's without right. having a lot of people there Good to support you, him. So I don't, I'm not fully on the, like, this is the Antonio's fault. It's been, hey, this is how heretics have decided they want to play, and they're doing a bloody good job of doing it. Keeping control over that top side, now having the Rift out in their back pockets. It feels like at least with the advantage that Wonder has, you can try and set up for these constant pushes on bot side. But at the because you don't win out on the mid push, it's going to be more difficult now for heretics to try and support onto that bottom side when the AD carries match up in this mid lane. Absolutely. I think in side lane right now, Wunder has the edge over the Lucian. You can strong side him up here if you want to play for side that tier two up top. You can see already Team Heretics, Jankos and Trimby invading the top side to set up vision so that Wunder knows when he can push forward and when he could potentially get collapsed on. A lot of movement speed in that brand as well. I mean, he's sprinting up here. As Wanda gets the first early trade as well for the inner turret. You can see that Giant X are also trying to match as well, but the Herald will be placed on down. Flacken with his wave clear, and the right gun timing makes it easy, but Nature's Grab comes out. Wanda goes too far forward, has the flash. Solar Flare stops the advance from Giant X, but a bit of a mistake here from Wanda as he now has to burn the summoner. I mean, you'll take those Giant X. It's like, oh, you don't really get a terror. Oh, well, you get terror mid terror, I suppose. He's kind of their backup answer, but mm -hmm. at least the, the position being able to control top tier two is nice, but I think they needed to leave someone here to try and defend mid turret because the fact that you don't end up getting the protection there means that essentially that Rift Herald still ends up with a win when it could have been controlled. Yeah, the, the only problem is like if you don't overextend numbers versus Rift Herald and a three grubs, you could potentially lose tier two and that's just so much gold. So they sacrifice mid tower, which is a really big sacrifice in and of itself. Um, and give a bunch of gold over to the Corky, but Jackie's now. Oh, he's caught out. He's too far forward. Well. And again, you just talked about it. there's no turret there. Ulti just burnt Yankos with a freebie, and Spyro gets a kill. I mean, bit of a mistake. And man, classic Jackie's at this point. This dude in mid game loves to get caught out. It's kind of been a specialty, and it's, I mean, you can hear GB on the desk talk about it as well. This has kind of been the downfall of Giant X. Yeah. It's just people getting caught out when they really oh, shouldn't ooh, be. But there's the play. all in into Patrick as well. Flack and Ulti's been oh, exhausted. The trade almost. The last auto connects all one for one. Now for Giant X, they run away because Viro's in. But man, the Giant X bottom line, I gotta They're respect behind that. Behind the Antonia though. And now I respect this, don't I? The all on in and onto Viro. He does a lot of damage, but it's still not enough. There's Jankos to save the day. The thoughts are good, but in the end, Team Heretics is just getting too much in return. And it's just a disaster for Giant X across the board. They try, they die up topside in Jackies, and they try to make a play mid. It feels like desperation. It fails. Ignoff commits the flash as well, and Patrick goes into the ulti. But then you have the Antonio trying to flank, make a pick, and he doesn't do enough damage even through the tab eyes on Zviru. Yeah. It's just not enough. I look at Dagda, and Dagda, you know what he said? Not good. With his <laughs> eyes. With his eyes, of course. But i re I got to say, yeah. I respect this. Take a look at the damage coming in from the, 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 the ulti here. This is a big thing with new AD carry items. They have so much AD on them. <laughs> the exhaust comes down onto Patrick and nullifies a bunch of damage, but he gets absolutely popped. And then the other side here, and this is this is just the Antonio <laughs> committing, uh, committing TP and just being so far behind. You would expect him to do a lot more damage than this, given the fact that it's full armor on the Corgi here, but not going to be enough. Yeah, I think that's kind of where, unfortunately, the Antonio just isn't going to have the best of times. Even going for a more defensive build, immediately going towards the Zanyas as well, means that he's just not going to have that same kind of pop potential. Jackie's going to have a bit of company on this top side, should be able to commit the cooling to clear the wave if he needs to, though. Also, with both Ignar and Juhan here to cover, I think they should be relatively okay. Or the TL spam is the wrong team, but you know, Fnatic's later, mate. <laughs> not today, but later. At least the Nature's Grass is in the same position, comes out. The burn on the turret is big, but. Only one brute comes down in the end. Giant X don't have numbers, nor do they want to fight this as a nature scrap again. It is really weird. I thought they would use the culling in this situation yep. instead of that Juhan ult, because you can just clear out the wave and then still have the Juhan ult to set up for a team fight if you want to, because having that kind of combo of following up with Ignar and the Antonio and still being able to have at least access to your basic abilities would mean that Jackie's can still be relevant in a team fight. Losing that Maokai ultimate, I feel, takes away a lot of the threat coming into this, especially when Ignar doesn't have that flash available. Yeah, it definitely does. I think having that 
Fog of War Maokai ultimate is super powerful. Um, just an enemy getting hit by it. But the thing is, though, Trimby can just tank it. Yep. They still get the Dragon anyway. As Team Heretics don't seem in position to get it, they seem really intent on getting that Tier 2 up topside. Con constantly committing numbers, playing mid into top lane, because they want that Tier 2. It's essentially prepped, you know? Anyone who can head on over to that, can be demolished Brocker 2 and just secure a bundle of gold. They just do it now, right? And, you know, while we are in a bit of a lull, while we look for this top turret, I mean, again, it does feel like in this game, like we saw towards mid, the only person who's really going to be in damage control soon, rather than later, I think we need to kind of mention Patrick. And I know you guys, over the course of this week, we're having big discussions about Patrick and how he is for the team, even in the losses, right? Like, we've been looking for, okay, who's the star player of this team, right? I feel like Patrick's kind of been edging to the front a little bit again. Well, I think it, the star player has definitely been Jackie's, but in the been. last series yep. against Fnatic, I definitely think Patrick took a big step up, mm. which was trying to find these moments, particularly on champions like the Kai'Sa, where he could try and be that damage dealer, especially when Jackie's had already kind of overextended or got caught out. And having those moments where you can see from his damage, like trying to put himself into positions where he could also be that carry. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do so against Fnatic. He just got to game two and game three, but certainly in that first game, looking really good on the Kai'Sa. Absolutely. Finding those backline dives. I think Patrick did really well there. My biggest criticism of him was that even with leads, it felt like they weren't secure. He would always find a way to get picked. I remember him being Cassante maker by uh, BB, you know, last split or maybe the yeah. split before. It would happen very often as... I'm kind of under wonder. I don't think they have the gas here yet. Yeah, they're not going to go for it. I mean, he's still got a big name in the terms of Patrick. I mean, this bottom lane, I've been excited to see back together, especially with Ignaz's resume alongside it as well. He's okay. waiting forward. This okay. is a barren start. I was waiting. They're standing in front. Let's see how they go. Zwyro's TP is almost off cooldown there. Double AD carry plus a Maokai with the Andrews. That's a decent amount. TP first, though. The damage. Yeah, Zwyro's TP should be up now, so he can join as well. That's this Jackie is fast. Bin. I mean, with Lucian in now, it definitely will be. But Trimby Yankos here. It's going to be flipped at this rate at 3.5k. Still being taken down. Team Heretic take the what leash. Does? Wonder, though, just gets shredded. Jackie's comes in in the end. Tony gets the back line. Team Heretics were torn apart. The Baron never de aggroed. And the Baron take turn to turn. Turn back to a genius move from Giant X. GX set up a beautiful trap there for Heretics. They'd already gotten that ward in onto the back line so that then the Antonio had a great position when he came in on the flank. Heretics were scrambling to catch up to the Baron play, so couldn't clear out the vision, but now Juhan needs to scramble on out of here. Flashes away. I mean, that's not too much to, pri to pay for the price of getting the Baron five members up with it. I mean, I think the big thing there was Wonder. I think he felt really overconfident because he had such a big lead. He thought yeah. he could face tank, but you can never face tank. Two AD carries, you cannot drain tank them. They just turn on him. And an I was speaking to Odo Omni, he was like, why don't you like Aatrox? And he said, the thing is with this champion is if you ever call focus Aatrox, he will die yep. because he needs to drain tank up low damage. But right now, it's all AD carries and you will just get one shot. As we saw there. Yeah, but fantastic stuff from Giant X. Like the, the opportunity for the Antonio to get into the back line, yep. they set it from Juhan, there was no panic. And I think this is where we've kind of seen the growth of Giant X from when they first played Heretics in their very first game of this split. It was very chaotic on the Giant X's side. There wasn't that communication. But now you're seeing when they get into fights, they are operating as a squad. They're finding these moments to take the picks and suddenly turn what was a very Heretic side of game back in their favor. Maybe it's those role players that have come into the team. I mean, the Antonio feels like a big role player for the Giant X squad. I feel like Juhan as well, someone we talked about at the start of the split, he's kind of found his place too, assimilating to a roster that was pulled apart a bit with Peach leaving, with Odo leaving as well. It also just feels like a lot of trust. It's, hey, yeah. look, we know that this person is going to do the job that we need them to do in this situation. Like, Juhan understanding, as you say, what his role is in a team fight. How is Ignar going to create space for the back line? And it has worked absolutely fantastically, but now Yankos, we're going to need to get out of here. Should be able to escape towards his mid lane. Now the question is, how much can they get off of this? The tier 2 up top side looks juicy. Trim's going to tank away. this. Yeah, he will tank it, but it just depends. I don't think Ignar wants to go Ooh, in, but the does he? <laughs> Under Trimby gets shredded! Double 80 carries do one thing well, and that Fire's is dead. burn down tanks as Antonio just solo kills Fyro. Ignar's going to be the trade-off, though, and Wonder gets a reset, so he starts flap, flap, flapping his wings as Jackie's is now isolated for the time being. Good little relentless pursuit back, and Wonder can't chase anymore, but it's still a winning trade with Giant X getting two. The Antonio's like, I can't let his Derek's down. Down. I yeah. need to step up when it gets Exactly what he said, David. Exactly. It's looking, look, Get he's found a couple of different picks now, which have worked out great. But again, nice play from Heretics. They could see Yanko's trying to clear a vision in River, and we're like, hang on a second. We've already got that fast track to topside jungle, set up with Juhan with this long range ultimate, and are able to pick off Trimby instead. It's just really well orchestrated. Yeah, you can 
crazy. The ulti being tanked by Trimby there. It isn't enough. Patrick still melts in four people focusing the same target. Then there's the one shot that should have happened earlier yeah, on. Yeah, I was gonna say, those he's, raids. he's like, now I can do it. But the thing is, Wonder's still huge, right? There is still agency on Wonder for him to carry, especially if he comes in at the end of a fight and doesn't yep. get locked up and focused. I think Wonder into this dive composition, this short range composition, we keep saying that. The biggest problem though for this next fight is that Heretics don't have the exhaust quite available. So if Giant X can pull a trigger very quickly, the Antonio has a moment, but it is going to tick up in just a mm. couple of seconds. So looks like GX have lost that small timing window. Flacken has red white, but the vision to spot out where the members of GX are isn't quite there. It's really shallow and the Antonio has flash. So yeah. you need to be quick on this exhaust trivia. And that's such a game changing wall as well. You flash over, especially in that narrow point where Team Heretics are now. You can end the game. They've gotten good vision now. This has forced the Antonio to group, and if you can go front to back, it's easier for Heretics. They know he's there. Nature's Grasp is there as well onto the Dragon. It is eventually taken by Giant X, but over the wall, they try and turn off the Antonio's brand. All fly through, but Wonder. Wonder jumps in early again. Antonio! And the Antonio shocks him in awe. Now the front to back changes hands as the Antonio gets poked on out, and yes, Black it has damage, and so does Viro as he pokes through and finds something. Even with two members left alive, the health bars of Giant X are low. They have to leave. But remember, they picked up the dragon. They're on Soul Point. They also won the fight. The Antonio finds that flank from topside. You were highlighting it, Dagda. They had the topside warded. The flank wasn't possible until Wonder overextends. And then Kennen, the Antonio, manages to find a little bit of a cleanup towards the end for Team Heretics, but a massive win uh, in terms of a team fight. Third dragon going over to Giant X. Yeah, you can see it here. The Antonio waits so long before he joins. It actually got a little bit nervous, but Patrick gave to flash away. They're buying space in the backline from Wonder. Oh. Juhan again protects that backline. And then it's the Antonio who says, I've got that moment. He goes in. Yes, he gets exhausted, but it's just that moment to CC people allows Jackies to step forward. But again, it does get dangerous on the backlines. Viro getting some nice damage down. Flash not quite able to hit with the uh, Q there, but and still Giant X come out on top. It's just like the Antonio team fighting moment again. It feels like, I mean, the Orn with the knockups of four. Okay, maybe hysterics, maybe you're <laughs> Okay, I'm being converted to the church of the Antonio. Oh, I told you, man. Anyone with the in the name becomes an absolute town hero. Okay, it started with the shine 2018, and then look at him 2019 world champ. Sorry, 2018 world champ, actually. Uh, but still, look for the Antonio. I've got to say, now with two and a bit items, we're looking towards that third because that will be an extra bit of shock and awe added into the mix. Patrick as well, three yep. items here on the Kaiser. That's another big point we've got to bring up. He has a bounty on him. And Patrick's actually doing really well in this game. Now with the gold lead over Flackett as well, and feels like a big threat as Team Heretics try to come back to this top turret. You see though on the bottom side, Jackies is going to try and trade it. So Heretics commit a lot of members towards that top side. Mm -hmm. and I believe Jackie should be able to get that on the bot lane. So you end up in a position where at least the moment you are still trading, which isn't the worst when uh, you're still waiting here for Giant X to kind of get position on the map and push out these waves, and then maybe look towards Baron in just a couple of seconds. Yeah, third item really needs to come out for uh, Flackid, Jankos, and Wonder here. They've got to buy potions. They've got to buy absolutely everything they can for this next team fight. It's going to be Soul. They've got to get a bunch of stuff. Alexis, get everything. Throw out the wall, see if it sticks, because this is going to be a last chance. Feels like we've already started the series in the perfect way I wanted. It's Elimination Day, and, you know, for Team Heretics and Giant X, their story this year has been, like, let's be real, a little bit sadder. They've been getting bottom of the barrel, making their way into playoffs, but not really achieving too much outside of that, right? Again, we look at this game and it feels like there's been adaptations throughout the whole year to get to this point is now in front of Baron again. Giant who snuck it before and looked for the genius turn. Try to lure Team Heretics in once more. Keep my eyes on the Antonio. He's the guy that, if he can get a flank, can cause a lot of issues. And right now, he hasn't been spotted on any vision. Trying to play around this very far edge of the map. I think he might have just been caught on that. Pink Ward, as I said it though, so that's why Zvairu trying to match him now. Yeah. They definitely know exactly where he is, so I'm going to try and force back the mouse and make sure he can't have anywhere in the house. Yeah, but they could rush down this Nash so fast. Double AD carry, they oh, absolutely yeah. want shot. They're just doing it, right? And you can see Igna here playing point guard. Jackie's just holding off. I mean, another Culling point guard is here. Out. It does indeed. Trimby's taken so much damage oh. at the start. That Leona's now one shot. Shield comes through. Yankos gets a flash out, but with the nature's grass, I mean, Baron is just gone. Great zone control. And Trimby can't even think about an engage. This is the problem, right? Trimby is the one who wants to tank the Maokai so when he gets chunked by this culling, someone else has to, they can't go forward. And this is the, what I was talking about earlier. It's impossible for you to try and approach this for Team Heretics yeah, if you're you behind. Said. Trimby, yes, can be somewhat tanky, but he's not tanky enough, and the rest of the team kind of needs to file in behind him. So you end up in a position where you can use the poke from Patrick, use the culling from Jackies, play at range, and constantly having the Antonio off on side means you can't really fight forward as Heretics either. So you're just 
caught between a rock and a hard place. And now your options limited. I mean, Baron goes over again this time with Giant X, much cleaner exchange, and or should I say, one that ends without fighting. We have to see how they play the map, because again, the standing gold limited to, I believe that tier two in the mid lane as well. Uh, if it's still even there, no, excuse me, tier two in the top side. And the rest of the base is Giant X now gear themselves up for Dragon, because this also would be another boon, adding in Mountain Soul. Yeah, third item coming in for Flakid here. This is where he's at his strongest relative to the enemy. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, though, Giant X have made a really nice adaptation. Gone for Poke, Maokai, and Poke Kaiser. Now you outrange the Ophelios rather than having to play Dive, and you play this slow burn war, where Trimby feels obligated to find this engage before his teammates get poked out. And that puts a lot of pressure on him. Trimby, he has to find the engages in the next team fight. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to play with the low health bars. If you see Antonio on top side, you can pull the trigger and Trimby does. I mean, he does indeed. He's just going to get burnt down, though. What were they expecting? Team Heretics maybe getting desperate as the TP comes out in the meantime. The Antonio might just get a free one as he rolls in and a three man knockup sets it up. And that's just that, isn't it? Team Heretics now against the wall. And Giant X, this culmination of a year, is looking red hot to move forward. And I understand the idea from Trimby. It's. The Antonio is pushing top. They don't have any wards in behind us. Maybe this is the moment, but he flashes and ends up Xenoblading so far forward. Yeah. No one is in position to follow, and immediately he gets his legs cut out from underneath him. And the rest of Heretics soon follow. Now Giant X are going to run down mid, get that top tower as well. And this feels like a Giant X taking game one. Yeah, tier two is up top side, tier two mid as well. Now all is left to crack open the base. That's Mountain Soul as well. You've got to wonder if this is just over. But take a look at this. I think Trimby really feels pressure to engage. Kenan can always TP here if he wants to, but the, the poke is a real win con that Giant X have. They outrange right now, and Aphelios really hates that, so Trimby feels the urgency to engage. He pulls it off, but gets absolutely melted. Also, just great flash from Jackie's in response, because if the Xena played it hit, Yankos was there to follow. That could have been a very different story, but all of Giant X still standing, able to return. And you can see Trimby. Oh. Trying his damnedest there, but it was bit, it was always going to be a Hail Mary play to try and get control back of this game, but I think it's too far gone at this stage. Been a real rough split for that guy. I mean, Trimby had a great entrance, as we remember, coming into Team Heretic's spring, if I'm not mistaken. And then, you know, this split, it's been a little bit more downhill, getting caught out in random positions through the game. A lot of people at home will really understand. I think it's also, I mean, the pressure of this could be it. Like, yeah. you need to make it happen. Oh, and Jackie oh, and is making is. it happen. Dactor for game one. It is, isn't it? The Antonio again. Shocking Spyro. I think he has a personal vendetta against that guy's wonder. Tanks and drains, but then can't drain any more tanks. At the end, Giant X have one member left standing in their way. A base to crack and a game to clean up now. And it's all going down the drain for Heretics. They can't keep control of this flak. It needs to be a one-man army, but everyone has abandoned them. And Giant X are just going to crush through. Ulti comes through, and flak it. A shield is there. Aragon, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. I know. It's you just going to tell me that it's over, aren't you? Because Giant X, as they crush through game number one, they're going to date with Destiny, move to match point to try and make some finals a reality. And what I was going to say was, yeah, I mean, it's such a shame because that Baron was a throw, right? It felt like Team yeah. Heretics had such a good early game, but Giant X, they capitalize, utilize the composition well. They find that Baron rush and they turn the entire game around. It's a rinse and repeat of, of SK. It wasn't a good early game, game number two. We're like, oh, hang on, they're working with something here. And then, unfortunately, when it gets to the team play, Team Heretics just don't have the same vibe. We have to find out if it's going to be a repeat of Giant X versus Fnatic, though. Giant X is a great mm. game one. They need to keep this going now. Try and find that quick 2-0, keep that momentum riding because you never want to give Heretics away back into a series. No, you do not. We'll see if they can at least fight their way back through as we go to a short break, then return with Game 2 after this.